In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I greet you. How are you today? May God bless you. What I, when I look at what is being done to me because uh, of the hundred years I've lived, I, I feel short of words to say. Sinige Zembiro Tako Zajed Guirori Bikenda Kumaruquez. Never in my dreams have I thought that never in my dreams have I thought that there will be celebrations for my life which take over a month to, to celebrate. I want to tell you one street secret, important secret. All of these celebrations are because I love this Bible. The cover of my Bible is old. But what is written in that book never gets old. Even I am old on the outside. But inside me I might be old outside, but inside me, I'm a young man. You cannot deny that. Who am I to, uh, uh, to uh, deserve what they are doing to me? The secret, the secret is that I'm outside on the, I'm, I'm old on the outside, but inside I will never get old. <laughs> In the past years, I was in a place called Arusha, and I was leading a congregation of pastors. They chose me to go and lead uh, camp meetings in, in Dar es Salaam. As I was driving, going to Dar es Salaam, they stole my Bible. They stole my Bible, but what is inside my mind never was stolen. You need to have the Bible in your mind. You will grow old physically, but inside you will still be a young person. I have decided to preach in Kinyarwanda today. I have preached in English, I've preached in French, I've preached, preached in Kiswahili in very different countries. Until a time came that I could no longer preach in my mother tongue, Kinyarwanda. And today, on my 100th birthday, I'm going to preach in Kinyarwanda. I, I want to thank the Lord that my old age, I am in my country, Rwanda. May the name of the Lord be praised. When I was asked to preach at Kigali English Church today, which included a celebration of my 100th birthday. Many people come to my home. There were celebrations on Thursday night and they were celebrating for me as if I'm a king. They sang for me. The, the Rwandans danced in the Kinyarwanda culture. And I asked myself, who am I? I 
I didn't know this was being planned. It was told to my son, Gerald, but I, didn't, I had no idea. A tent was pitched in my compound. I had no idea it was being done. And I asked, what is this tent for? Others have called me on my phone. And they said they want to come and see a person who is 100 years old, how he looks like. But I want to tell you that what is in my mind never gets old. My question, the question in my mind is, what will I talk about at English Church? I might end up mis mixing language because time has made me like Because I've used English a number of years. One thing I want us to discuss today there are two or three things. Maybe this might be my last time to preach to you, English Church. What I'm sure of, I won't live for another hundred years. These ones I've completed. When I observe the people who were here at the pulpit, that young man there I met behind here, Ted, who is the, uh, leading this, uh, and he introduced himself to me. And he told me he is the son of Pastor Murechesi. <laughs> Said, I know your dad when he was a young man. <laughs> I know this translator here when he was still a young man. <laughs> <laughs> this young boy, a boy I, knew, I knew is now an old person with no hair. I want to tell you the secret why we grow old this way. And we lose our hair. And we start uh, going on a stick. And we need a stick to walk. That is what I want us to discuss today. Why? Why? I would wish to become a young man and be a young man for a long time. First of all, we need to know who God is, our creator. Who is he? These days, I'm not preaching anymore. I am teaching the Bible study. It's a Bible study. Because because preaching is advising people to put in practice what they have studied. When you preach, when you have not taught, then you are wasting your time. I want you to understand this. I want you to take notes, especially to the preachers who are here. When you start preaching before you teach, you are wasting your time. Bible study comes before preaching. But in many cases, we start by preaching. We need to study this book. Our scripture reading was in John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. Jesus told the Jews that had accepted him. That you Jews, shall we read, 
Knowing the truth is knowing this book. You can never be a doctor without going through medical school. You can never be a leader without learning about leadership. You cannot be a farmer without learning how to farm. And instead of uh, keeping cattle, we are now keeping rabbits and goats. We are we are herding pigs and rats. Initially, people are supposed to herd cattle. And we grow crops. And then we harvest those crops. And these days, we have changed the language that we harvest cattle. A cow is supposed to be to, to have uh, milk, milk to be given to children and they grow healthy. By the way, in Before I forget, I'm not coming here very regularly. I cannot hear well anymore. If I come to church, I can because, because of these microphones I cannot hear anymore and I go up without hearing anything. So I decided to go to stay home and read my Bible. Whenever you don't see me here, you know that I'm at home reading my Bible. I sometimes use my hearing aids, but still I don't, uh, they are not very useful. But I have also got the technology to preach to How many of you have followed my YouTube channel? <laughs> you didn't raise your hands, your hands properly. He didn't see you. How many of you are following? How many are following his YouTube channels? Raise your hands. Yeah. Only, eight, only eight people of uh, no, Noah's family were saved. And my family in Kigali English Church is not following me. Today, I managed to come to church. I want to thank the people who have allowed me to come. I thank Pastor Tommy. May God bless you. Pastor Seth, God bless you. Elder Jared, God bless you. Elder Peter and Kubara. God bless you, Elder Peter. And everybody else who are here. I request you to have a Bible study. You are all my children. I want to give you an advice. Reduce the preaching but have a Bible study. Preach, teach to these people so that you may be together in heaven. One more thing. Whatever I'm going to teach you today, it's a bit it's not everything that uh, I, I have, but it's about teaching you my I would request for another Sabbath and the third Sabbath. This is not a request, it's an order. Do you think I can put a hundred years experience in just a few minutes here? 
I also need an afternoon so that you have the opportunity to ask me questions. People from the United States ask me questions and I answer them. Same happens from Belgium. People ask questions. Because I have a Bible study for a short period, and I provide time for discussions. And people ask questions. And they give their comments. And we discuss about But this business of standing before a congregation, even when it is an abuse, people will tend to say, Amen. Amen. And everything they say, it, say, it says, I'm a Amen. When the pipe pastor says that God is going to destroy you, you end up saying, Amen. This business of saying, Amen, every time is not very useful. People have time to ask questions. You are teaching to people to understanding people. You are not teaching to animals. A teacher who doesn't provide time for asking questions is not a good And we have looked down upon the book of God. And we tend to just talk. And sometimes, as a human being, you might say, Things which are not correct. and then you end up saying, Amen, and go home. Is this type of system going to take us to heaven? Really? I need you to give me time to ask questions. <laughs> Look for all questions that you have about Christianity and I will answer those I will not fail to get an answer. And if I fail to get one, I'll tell you that I can't find one. We are on a journey that soon we are going to be able to ask questions to Jesus Christ. Where you don't have to ask to Pastor Mkisi. Today I want to discuss you taking out, out taking you out of darkness, bringing it to light. I'm not. Going to talk to you. I want to talk to you about God's word. And when and when I talk about the word of God, I'm talking about the one we call the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When you talk about God without mentioning his son, Jesus Christ, and without mentioning the Holy Spirit, you have not talked about God. The word God was an, an invention of man. <coughs> the creator of heaven and earth was never named God. He is a creator. And there are seven things or seven characteristics that identify that creator. And these, these seven character, uh, characters identify the three a trinity of God. And these seven characteristics cannot be, uh, belong to anybody else. I studied theology for four years and nobody told me this. But I researched in my Bible and I discovered those seven. And this book, I'm going to die with it. It has material. Seven attributes. Seven attributes that characterize characterize who that whom we call God. If you don't know those seven attributes, you are not. Uh, 
Urasenge iyo tazi. How can you worship somebody you don't know? Abo kwa ni batatu. Those three godheads. Ibakori cha. They never sin. Bure bya birango birindwi bibaranga. In those seven attributes of God. Ikaga tanda tukitwa omnipotent nyiru bubasha hejuru ya byose. The sixth attribute of God is omnipotent. I want to talk about omnipotence. This is a foreign uh, language. It's English. Omnipotence means you have authority above everything else. But he doesn't do everything. What doesn't he do? He never sins. They never sin. They have authority over everything. They can do everything. But there are things that are taboo they can't do. And you claim that God has power over everything. Beyond this point. But you forget that there is a point that you cannot go beyond. God never sins. What is it that God has that we don't have? It is good nature. Sinless nature. And that good, uh, good uh, sinless nature. Sinless nature. And that good nature of God is sinless nature. Aboyarem. Harabarem harinababuk. There are those that God created, but there are also those that are born. I'm talking about sin. Imanani sinless if it God has sinless nature. When God created man, he also created him with a sinless nature. And who are those who are created? One is Lucifer and other angels. God created the heavens and the earth and everything that they are in. But those other Christians, uh, creatures, they were not given the ability to commit sin. What man calls uh, animals, they never sin. And, they, and scientists, they call a man a beast, also an animal. And others say that we, uh, we come from animals. Do gorillas sin? Do cows commit sin? Sinless nature. But the angels who were created with a sinless nature. And you come down up to the level of mankind. And that is Adam and Eve. When God created them, they had a sinless nature. Sinful nature. How did sinful nature come to us? If God is sinless, he has a sinless nature. And he, all his creations were created with a sinless nature. The question is, how did sinful nature come about? This is a question that we need to ask ourselves. Sinful nature. Sinful nature stems from Lucifer himself.
when God created the the Bible does not tell us how the angels were created or how their bodies are. But in their mind, an important thing was breathed in It is the human being that we are told how he was created. And and I want you to mention this important thing that God created man. God created one person. And then God created for that man a young girl in a wonderful way. God did not create tribes. God could not create, uh, did not create any Tutsi. God did not create any Tutsi. God never created any <coughs> white person. He didn't create any Chinese. He did not create any Ugandan or Congolese. How did this appear? The consequence of the sin for nature. All these appeared because of the consequence of a sinful nature. And then we Rwandans here claim that we are not knowing this book is a problem. I was not created. None of us here was created. You were born. Do you see what the Bible is about? Do you understand the, the benefit of growing up? I have experienced a lot. God did not create our skin colors. This is all a result of a consequence of sin. God created heavens and earth. He did not create God did not create Rwanda. And the Rwandans claim that the God of Rwanda that's Very soon they'll be saying the God of men and the God of women. I want you to wake up and throw away Satan. God did not create the different tribes in Rwanda. God created man. What do you come to learn from here? And you come to learn about the number of children that Noah had. What tribe was uh, Abraham from? We learn how to make money. If you want to be an agriculturist, you learn about because God created man and created him in his own image. So ma Genesis 126. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Mm. Then God said, let us make man in our own image. Yes. Let us make man in our own image according to our likeness. Let us make man in our own image according to our own likeness so that he will look like us. Do you, realize, do you realize how close you are to God, how very near to God you are, and you have the audacity to call yourself to have stemmed from a gorilla? 
All these demarcations that we give ourselves are a result of the consequence of sin. It is because of sin that we developed these names that are making us collide with each other. God did not create Rwanda or the United States or the United States. God created the heavens and earth. And the man that God created is the one who created these uh, names. Soma Ecclesiastes. Umubwiriza karindwi 29. Let's uh, read Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 29. Mumbuko habuka. Only this, only see this. Ecclesiastes 7, 29. I have discovered that God made people upright, but they pursued many schemes. And this is what God said. This is what I said. God created man upright. And afterwards, they pursued many schemes. My father called me uh, Haina. Do you know what Haina means? How many of you want to know why my name is Haina? When I want to tell you about where my name stems from, you are very eager. Many of you are eager to know what But very few of us want to know what Jesus means. I have told many people why I have called. Uh, Jesus? Yes, but very few people come to me to ask me about Jesus Christ. That is how far we have reached. I want to encourage you to leave the earthly things and go to Jesus Christ. I want the young people here to come back to reality. I'm old on the outside, but inside I'm a young person. And that is because of this Bible which I have given my time. Those, those days when I was born, development was very limited. And many parents lost their children. My father lost many of his children. And the way the Rwandans used to believe then, when they get a young baby when the other children have died and they believe that death takes away children but this one if I give him a name of an animal the, the, the death will believe that this is not a person and death takes people not animals so when you are given, when you are given a person a, a, a name of a hyena and that's how my father called me when my mother my, my, when God saw that my parents have got a young baby and named Mpisi my parents didn't know the source of death but I know the source of death and the Haina have known the source of death because of this book the Bible and 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 
and the Lord looked graciously at my parents who had named their child Aina, and God has helped me to live 100 years. Other children who died, the parents thought that I have survived because of my name. And I attribute my long life to this book. Let us get out of this underdeveloped Bible. Let us be people of the Bible. When things happen, let's understand why they happen the way they happen. Let us not uh, 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 stay in unknowing. That's why you find many Rwandans have these uh, names of animals. That is the source of these names because they thought death does not take uh, kids with animal names. God created Lucifer when he was seen. God created Lucifer with a sinless nature. He created the angels also with sinless nature. But Lucifer, Lucifer betrayed God. And the sin is betrayed. I want us to know that when you commit sin, you have betrayed God. You have also betrayed yourself. Now, you have not uh, betrayed English church. You have betrayed yourself. God created sin. He had breathed into his mind. I see sinful nature. Then uh, Lucifer replaced his sinless mind with a sinful nature. Sinful nature. Sinful nature is not a sin. It is what causes you to commit sin. Sinless nature. Sinless nature is what you have been converted to that makes you not commit sin. I want us to understand the two differences. Sinful nature Sinful nature stems from Lucifer. Sinless nature stems from God the Creator. And it is not the sinful nature that came first. It was sinless nature that came first. That man that was created by God. I want us to understand what happened to Lucifer. Let us read the book of Ezekiel chapter 28. That's why I told you. Ezekiel chapter 28. And I told you that 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 I told you I told you that I told you I don't think I have another I told you that I I told you that I told you I you You want me to impose myself on you? I am now very obedient to the leaders. I request uh, leadership of this church to give me time. I need you time to I need time to come and uh, give time we need more time to understand what sinless nature is we need to understand what sinful nature is and you ask questions Ezekiel chapter 28 
Ezekiel 28, verse 14 and 15. My book is very old, but inside it is never, never gets. The same applies to me. I don't get old on the inside. My own children and grandchildren are also getting bold, but <laughs> my children <laughs> I don't know you might grow old but inside if you read the bible you'll stay young inside we read that verse and that is about Lucifer. Right? languages. There is no fear of fire in heaven because of the language in the Bible. There are things that God himself named. There are also the language that Satan used. And then there is also a language of man. Did you know that? And you end up reading what was, written, what was spoken by man in uh, in the Bible, attributed by Satan, you attributed to God. I told you that God is omnipotent and never sins. But in the Bible, it reads that God is the one who destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. But we said God does not kill. How did he destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? Can you find an answer for that question? I'm not giving that answer. Come to my Bible I, I, I just want you to give me time. I want to excite your mind so that you can come. I want you to leave something in your uh, uh, questioning your mind. I have so much in my head that I want to give to you. I want to put it out. And I don't have enough I end up talking to people whom I can't see who don't see me. I, but I can see myself here. I'm looking at my outside. Do you, how many of you know me when I was still a young man? And the, the, the reason why I look like this is, is the result of sin. But inside me, I'm still a very young man. And that's why I'm very grateful to the Bible that God gave me. I can jump up even when I'm not able to. Hey. Let us follow those verses. And that's God telling us. You were blameless in your ways until weaknesses were, wickedness was found in you. This is language. That language is for human beings. It's, that, it's not that uh, righteousness or uh, wickedness was found on his body. Sinful nature was inside, not on his body. 
it was not according to the verse. It was not found on his body. It was inside him. He was created with sinless nature. How did this sinful nature appear? I'm not answering that question now. I'll answer that question that time you'll give me. To talk. Please write down that question. Are you following me? Some of you might think, look at this old man who is telling me something from the Bible. Do you realize the importance of giving your time to the Bible? For the doctors who are here, God gave you that ability. God gave you that ability to understand and to know. And, go, and the doctor ends up giving, giving you anesthesia and he operates on you when you are unconscious. Do the doctors get this knowledge within one week? When I went to Nairobi some time back, somebody wanted to do an operation on me. He told me that there is somebody who is specifically in charge of administering anesthesia. The doctor told him that we have to wait for this person until he's available and that's only when I can operate on you. Do you think that this doctor got this knowledge in one but when it comes to matters concerning God, and we expect that God is going to impart these on us. The Bible says that you will get what you eat after sweating. And then you expect God's words to, to just fall from heaven into your mind. Our earlier preachers told us that we don't ask about God's materials. Others say God has a because of his grace, God is going to take us to heaven just like that. I want to assure you that God is not going to take you like that. Until you get, you take your time and sweat reading the Bible. So, No. It's not up to you to come and just listen and then go home. When you want cows or animals, you take time to rear them. You just don't sit there. You have to feed and take care of that cow until it gives you milk. Now, God created Lucifer. God created Lucifer a sinless person and Lucifer betrayed him and he said that I'm also God like you. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 1. Let's read Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 1. 
Ukoni kwa umwami umwami uiteka vuga ngo Umutima wawe wishize hejuru urabuguti ndi imana nicaye kuntebe y'imana This verse is talking about talking about Lucifer and he says the ruler of Tyre the ruler of Tyre is Lucifer and he says this is what the Lord says your heart is proud and you have said I am God I am a god Niki chatu mye Lucifer wali wala ibangwe sinless nature Agira ubugome bugeze ingiye ngo nawe ni imana what caused this Satan, uh, Lucifer, who had been created with a, sin, a sinless nature, to reach to this extent? Where did this come from? He was himself with his creator. Nobody came to tempt him. And he was created sinless. Where does this come from? I'm not answering this question today. You need to come that time when I'm given the And I want to assure you I have an answer. And I get this answer from the Bible. It's not my personal answer. I am going to die with this Bible. I if we look down upon this book, we are going to be You are not supposed to quote somebody you heard. You cannot ask that question. You will never find him. That is how sin started. Sin for nature sinful nature started from Lucifer. It did not come from the angels. Lucifer is the one who tempted the angels. It did, sin did not start with Adam. Adam sinned because of Lucifer. But but because the angels had also a sinless nature, <laughs> Lucifer did not force them to sin. <laughs> he had to beg them. <laughs> Lucifer is able to lure somebody, tell you sweet words. <laughs> but the creator the created had that choice to say no to Satan, to Lucifer, or yes. God created or put in your mind four capacities. The capacity to know. The capacity to think. The capacity to choose. And in the, the fourth one is the ability to choose without interruption. Four characters. God did not protect the angels from Lucifer. The angels had the capacity to choose and they were supposed they could have uh, said no to Lucifer. I want to ask you a question concluding. All of us have sinned. The no, regulations of, of our no, church no, 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 no. you don't ask questions or you are not asked during the preaching time. I'm going to ask anyway and you give the answer. Whenever you are going to sin, who decides for you? Anybody. I'm ending. Who decides for you when you are going to commit sin? Yeah, go, 
She says, I decide for myself. <laughs> I'm glad the ladies have, have, have it, is, it is me who decides to take to, to commit sin or not to commit sin. And we end up blaming Satan that he has. Satan has no capacity to make you commit sin. God. When you take your own decision to commit sin, does God have that power to prevent you from committing sin? I want a man to answer. Does God have the capacity to prevent you from committing sin? The gentleman. Can God refuse you to... God does not interfere with you. God cannot interfere with your freedom. He's my student. Because of that freedom of it is Lucifer who does it. We are not going to talk about Adam. We shall talk about him next time. The descendants of Adam who were not created but who were born. The descendants of Adam I want to tell you that those who were created and those who were born, they are two different beings. Those who were created were created with freedom of choice. And those who were born, and this is us, we have no freedom to say yes or no to Satan. We don't have that freedom. We don't have that freedom to tell Satan that no, I'm not doing it, or yes, I'm doing it. We are born with a sinful nature. We are not born with sinless nature. It's only the created that have that choice. That, that nature, the sinless nature. But those who were born, who are descendants of Adam, we don't have that freedom of telling Satan that no. It takes back to, uh, to that verse of John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. If you wanted, you decided to go and kill, God will not hold your hand. I want to ask, what happened? Where was God during the genocide? Why did God stop people from killing? And they were killing innocent people. God tells you, but he never forces you. God tells you, but he never forces you. The Ten Commandments are, sub, are supposed to, are called commandments. If there were commandments, there wouldn't be a choice. You either listen to them or you die. 
That's how we are born. John chapter 8 verse 31 and 32. John chapter 8, 31 and 32. The true disciple of Jesus is the one who keeps what the Bible talks. A true disciple in English church is the one who is led by the word of God. He who holds on to the teaching of this book is the true Don't disciple. deceive yourself. Don't, Don't deceive yourself. It is he who holds on then you will know the truth. And the truth is our creator. So The truth is not so knowing Moses. The truth is not knowing Moses. So It's not knowing about John. Uh -uh. It's not knowing about Jesus going to heaven. No The truth is knowing our creator. To know your creator is when you follow what it is. And it is that truth that will set you free. We are all slaves. We are slaves to sin. We are slaves to sin. And then we are saved. We are set free by Jesus Christ. Toka kurwa. Mubrobwa bubata. No mwegusa Yesu kinuseto. We can only be taken out of that slave by only Jesus Christ. Tabunde. Ibya kozen huma kane chumina kabiri na hunda gachiza kajira gate. In the book of Acts chapter 2. There is no other source of salvation. Others think that getting saved is getting a All those earthly possessions don't end you well. That's why I'm saying that you need to know where sinless nature came from. Menya, sinful nature ya jite. Where does sinful nature come from? Menya tandu kanura re ni hagati ya bare mwe na bare na bavuka. You need to know the difference between the created and those who are born. Abo bavuka kwa ne kwa bavuka. Kandi imana ntabwo yacira iteka. Yacira ho iteka. Umuntu wavutsa cyo the gracious God cannot condemn a person who was born like that who was born without no choice but God brought for him something that will save him out of that nature that he was born with and God brought him success and some people accept that solution. And others refuse to accept that solution. Our last verse will come from the book of Romans chapter 6. Romans 6 chapter 6 verse 16. Harabuka hati. Nimozi yukuo mwihaye. Kumi imbatazo kumi umvira. Don't you know that if you offer yourself to someone as obedient slaves, you have offered yourself 
agasori yoga sezera na numu kovga karabu katindra kuiha ye uru wange those who are getting married they commit themselves that i have offered myself. and the other one also says i have offered myself once they have committed that then they are married pastor ubashingira siwe ntabwo yagutegetse ngo mwihe ni wowe uyifatiye cyemezo uramwiha it is yourself who took that decision to take it uyifatiye cyemezo uramwiha you also give yourself that choice nguko Yesu aradusanga bene adamu akatuka akatuzura tuzabivuga ubutaha akatuzura akatugezaho tugira freedom yo yo guhitamo Jesus comes and meets us at our lowest points and he offers himself to us and he offers you freedom how we, he offers that freedom we are going to learn next time. And you reach a point where you give yourself up to him. And you offer yourself to Jesus or to, Je to Satan. But if you say you, that's how you are born, you have no freedom at all. This is the end. That is the gospel that Pastor Mpisipuri preaches in these 100 years. Tell me a, past, a person with 100 years. Tell me a person with 100 years who has this vision. I sleep almost at And I wake up very early. Come to my house and see how many files are on my table. What I've been talking to you of head is and I don't and use a computer. I use my pen. I find difficult writing, but I'm trying. I'm trying to write a book, to author a book. <laughs> I'm writing a book that is different from other books. I'm writing a book. I'm writing a book. There are people who say they want to see how somebody of 100 years looks like. You see me on the outside, but inside you want me. I have a secret that I get from myself. Somebody asked me what is the secret of living a, a long life. I want to tell you what makes you grow old fast. Number one is hatred. If you continue or keep thinking about hatred and doing bad things, that causes you always have trouble. You never... You are, you are never uh, quiet in your mind. You are thinking about hatred. Now hatred in even our denomination is no longer called a sin. Number two. Drinking. Drinking causes you getting, to get old. <laughs> You find a young man. I want to talk to the young people here. Uh, run away from drinking. And these, these young men give these drinks a very nice name. Drinking 
This wisdom of drinking, this wisdom of enticing young people to drink is from Satan. Number three, which makes you grow old. Running after women. It, 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 borders to, it borders to even homosexuality. A young man came to me recently who wanted advice from me whether he could, he could date a young man. And this is a Rwandan who wants to date a fellow man. Do you think that this uh, phenomenon of homosexuality is it, think has, it, has, it has always been there. Even in Sodom and Gomorrah, it was there. They even wanted to have sexual relationship with the angels who were passing by. Lot, Lot offered them his daughters. No. Homosexuality was there in the time of Lot. And now we have an association of homosexuals. That is one of the signs that proves that Jesus is about to come back. Finally, I have no, a lot to tell you. I, I realize I've not said anything. Those two natures, sinful and sinless natures. I want you to remember this. When Jesus comes back the second time, he will not come down there. We shall see him. He will be with his angels, those who have uh, overcome. And they'll open up the graves of those who died in Jesus Christ. Even when their bodies have rotted, they'll be given new bodies. He who will be still alive but accepting Jesus, his body will be transformed. But those only those who will be given those who will be transformed and those who will be resurrected. It will be only those who will have had sinless nature in their mind. Those who have their mind transformed. Those who are able to send away Satan. And Jesus will go with them to heaven. Those who don't accept Jesus, who will still be alive, they will look at Jesus in the sky and they will fall flat on earth, on ground. In the Bible, the Bible talks about that. They will, uh, la, 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 they will uh, uh, fall down like human waste. And that will be victor. <laughs> they will And Jesus will take those who have been saved for a thousand years. After those one thousand years. Jesus will come back for the third time. 
The third time he will not come back on a business of salvation. Even the second time it will not be salvation. He did that when he came the first time. And he will come down with the new Jerusalem. It's not the Jerusalem in the Middle East where there is war. It will be a new Jerusalem. Jerusalem that has been decorated by God himself. Those who have been transformed, whose minds have been transformed and the bodies transformed, they will come down with him. And that new Jerusalem will come at, the, at that mountain, uh, that mountain where he rose from uh, going to heaven. And he will step on that hill. And that hill will turn into a very big valley. And that valley will be the seat of the city of God. And there will be Jerusalem. That place is going to be uh, cleansed by his foot, not by fire. And those who have accepted Jesus who will be with Jesus in that city. No, no. And all those who were never resurrected in the first resurrection. And those who never accept Jesus and died at the second uh, coming. Satan, uh, Satan will be punished. He will spend a thousand years moving around alone among dead bodies. Those who were wicked, who were dead, others are lying and buried on the earth. Satan will be walking among them. Punishment without grace. That is punishment without grace. That is punishment. And they will be resurrected again. Even those who, were, uh, who died long time ago during the time of Adam. Somebody asked me that when all those who died are uh, resurrected, where will they fit? That is a question that a sub a someone uses. What is not possible to man is possible to God. If it's God knows how he will fit all the of them in this world. And God and uh, Lucifer will tell them that I'm the one who has come. Come, let's go and attack that city. I want to tell you that a person who is who died with the mind of promiscuity, he will uh, be resurrected promiscuous again. Whoever died drunk still will uh, will uh, resurrected with the mind of drunkenness. Whoever died full of hatred, he will, work, uh, will be resurrected with a lot of hatred. They will be resurrected exactly the same way they died. And, 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 and all those people who died, the Hitlers, all of those. Uh, great uh, As they prepare to attack that city, that's when Jesus was there. And they will stand up there. 
And there will be a movie that never has ever happened in the A movie that has never happened before. And there will be a lightning that has never been seen before. And those who died without knowing how to read, they'll be given the ability to read. And everybody will be able to read his name. And they, he will see all the sins that he had committed. Today, are, there were sins that he had committed. Time will come when they will come in the open. After they have all seen what they had committed. Bose bazafukamirima nangwa mafiyo sazamufukamira. After all has been shown, every Every knee shall bow down at that moment. At that time, Jesus would have said that it is finished. Whoever does not want to listen, there's a time you will not be able to refuse. Be careful. Be careful. Never play around with what you It's not something to play with. Every knee shall bow down. And everybody will accept. Do you know what will come next? They will come. All church leaders. Those who come here and preach what is not true. People will come and attack these pastors and cardinals and popes. This, people will come and attack you if you are and preaching the word. And the people who were, you are, you are, you are listening. You are not talking about my sins, you are talking about development. And we are, you are talking about healing diseases. Jesus came to heal your mind. Your yeah, that gentleman was, had come to Rwanda and he wanted to ask the king to preach the gospel. This gentleman, uh, Munier, said that he had come to change people's minds. He did not come to change our bodies. Jesus did not come to bring about development. He came to change our minds. And those who have been given new it is like they have been given new minds. Hey, the Bible says that rivers will be flowing blood of those who have preached the false prophet. Uh, I want to talk with the message to the preachers. Be careful of what you preach. You will be attacked. We preachers, we will be attacked. Fire is going to burn our people. Those who sit in the congregation and talk about a man and a woman are the ones who are going to attack you. There is a woman Another sad part is that a, a husband might be in the New Jerusalem and then the wife will be the other side. As the pastor said, uh, the, the, the children of Pastor Mpisi, are you going to be in the new city? Or are you going to be outside the city? 
This is the time to think about this. Today. Now. No, Today is the time to think about it. Are you going to be outside that city? Or are you going to be in the New Jerusalem? It is you alone who needs to take this decision. I cannot take a decision on behalf of my children. I teach them and they take their own decision. English church leaders, you teach but you don't force. You need to teach them to if you don't do that, those who have been preached to falsely are going to attack you. Won't it be a tragedy, a tragedy if I have lived for 100 years and then I'll be attacked by my own uh, subjects? Won't it be a tragedy if after 100 years I won't be able to go to the New Jerusalem? Being called a pastor and going to <coughs> heaven are two different things. Sinless in nature, sinful in nature. No, no. It is time for us to know which nature do I have. Is it sinful nature or is it sinless nature? To decide whether I will be in the new Jerusalem is today. May God help you in Jesus' name.